two mixed drinks of vodka and orange juice or whatever, and like maybe two big screwdrivers or something, and a couple beers. That night, when we left, I, I like I said, I thought to myself, I was okay. Kind of really had this invincibility, like a lot of high school seniors have, I believe, is the it's the belief that you never think it's going to happen to you. You always think it's going to happen to somebody else. You feel so young, like got so many parties to go to, I got college ahead of me, it's just not going to happen to me. Well, I think I can get away with it, I, I should be fine. And I just got my license when I turned 18. And the next thing I remember, I'm waking up on the side of the road, I started to shake him, I just kept shaking him, I said, Thomas, wake up, Thomas, wake up. And like, I thought he'd wake up, you know, I just thought he, was, he would be okay. And the impact forced him like diagonally straight back. And he was laying face up halfway out of the car. And I had to climb over his body. And I had to climb out the back windshield because that was the, the window had been shattered there. That was the only, really the only access out. The look in Thomas's dad's eyes. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And it like the more I said it, the less it made sense. Like the word just stopped making sense. Thomas's parents actually did what I thought was I think one never expect them to do it. They, they forgave me for the crash. And they, they said that they knew that I didn't mean to kill their son. Mr. and Mrs. Nguyen had talked to the judge and spoke to the judge on my behalf and they said they wanted the judge to be lenient with me. That they, they didn't feel that me going to jail would serve any purpose. They said that their son was taken away from them. They knew how horrible it felt and they said that they didn't want my parents to feel the same thing, a son being taken away from them. I mean, if there's anything I could do, what, do you, what would you like me to do? And the only thing she wanted from me was just to become a public speaker, just to tell people my story. And I was like, if that's all you want me to do, then of course. Like, I mean, it, was, it wasn't even like an obligation. It was like I just felt gracious that, I, that there was even something little I could do for her. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest the biggest message that that you try to relate to these kids are okay we're not going to be naive we don't want you to drink but you're going to be in these positions okay and this is all about risk taking and this is all about making the right decisions this is about putting yourself in the position to get in trouble and not get in trouble and if they're armed with the right information to make these decisions then they're not going to put, get, get in the car with somebody who's been drinking, or they're not going to drive while they have been drinking. And if that's just about that right there. If you can make that decision, no, I'm not going to do that. I'd yeah. rather get grounded than, than put myself in that position. Yeah. And if, if you can get a kid to, to think that way, then you've won.